Hi, you're listening to The Comedian's Tea Party with Cy Deeves. Fair warning, this podcast may contain adult content. It may not. I don't know. I never really have a plan. Let's listen on and find out. Hello and welcome to the Comedies Tea Party. We've got episode 55 with Rob Mulholland. It's a wonderful episode, very, very fun indeed. It was just as much fun listening back as it was recording. It was, it was really, really enjoyable. Rob's a, uh, a lovely guy. He's on the Dead Men Talking podcast and uh, he's had sort of plenty of podcasts and projects in the past well worth checking out he's already got a special on youtube but he he was coming on, on on onto this to to plug his new one which he does during the show sounds like it's really really funny so look forward to that when that comes out uh, born ready going to be very funny indeed so yeah just go go and check out all of his uh, all of his content what i'll say now is uh, if you're listening to this today and you are in the Brighton area or anywhere near, anywhere travelable to Brighton, if you want to head to Brighton tonight, uh, I've got my the first date of what is technically my tour of Cyclops, my my uh, my last show, which I'm really really proud of. I'm going to be recording it later in the year, so if you're in Southend, check out for that. I will release the dates. In fact, all existing dates are currently on my link tree so go to uh, go go to linktr.ee forward slash sideeves and you will find tickets for that but yeah i'm in i'm in brighton tonight if you listen to this on the day that it's released uh, it's this is you know slim slim chances but if you listen to this on the day that it's released today and you're in the brighton area or are willing to travel to brighton come to presuming eds at 9 15 for that show it's going to be really really fun i'm very very excited to get down there and do it. So yeah, this was a, a very fun episode. We just we talk a lot of nonsense, as is tradition. I don't think anyone's listening to this thinking, "Well, I hope they talk about some serious subjects," because that's not it's not what I do. It's not intentional. Like I'm happy to talk about serious subjects. It just doesn't happen. I'm not that guy. I finally right. I've been threatening to do it for ages. I finally created some Patreon content, and I think it's something that people might be interested in. It is basically I've I've created this thing, uh, which is sort of a it's a, a mini podcast from from gigs that I do, not from every gig that I do. It's not always convenient to do it, but it's like a behind the scenes for uh, gigs. It's the it's the bit that people don't get to see. It's the hanging out in green rooms. Obviously, I don't show the whole thing, but like I'll just I'll have a quick chat about how people are feeling about the gig, how the gig's set up. You know how I feel about it, and we'll talk about it before and after. And that's kind of the beauty of it. It's, um, it. I, I think it's. I think it's a really interesting thing to do, and hopefully you do too. Um, but the, the Patreon's going to be inexpensive to do, so you can you can sign up for sort of any amount. It's going to start at like a, a whatever the cheapest is, like a, a pound a month, dollar a month, whatever it is. Or there's probably going to be the option. I've not. I've not done enough research. I've not looked into it. Uh, but <laughs> you can probably do like a one-off donation. I don't know. At some point, and hopefully not too long, I'm going to have merch, t-shirts, mugs, that sort of thing. I need to get the artwork sorted. I've got my artwork guy, so he could do it. But if anyone wants to get in touch, if anyone if anyone wants to volunteer to do artwork, that would be wonderful. Get in touch on any of the social media channels or teapartypod at gmail.com. That is the letter T, partypod at gmail.com. That's the, the same as the at on everything, just teapartypod. Um, I imagine it will be patreon.com forward slash teapartypod. I don't know if that's how the... Just, it's going to be, it's gonna be t- t- tea party. Just, just search for the Comedian's Tea Party on Patreon. It's not on there yet. Uh, I, I'm going to try and do it this weekend. I've got, I've got my baby, so... If I get if I get a chance, but I should do it. Should should be this weekend that it'll go up. I'll I'll post about it online, and then you can join the Patreon and listen to this. Uh, it's it's really fun. It's been fun so far. I've uh, I only recorded sort of little bits, but yeah, it's just the it's just the bits that people don't get to hear. So hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, so I won't hang about. Let's get straight into the episode. Enjoy. 
See you at the end. Uh, yeah, go on. What you got? <laughs> let's 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 start start with the tea. Uh, naturally, uh, yeah, I've just got a standard mug of Yorkshire tea. Uh, I don't play with anything else. I'm a Yorkshireman. I would be uh, not allowed home if I had any other brew. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Slightly disappointed it's regular Yorkshire, not gold. I'm a gold man myself, but uh wasn't me who did the shopping this week. So uh, I was going to ask, yeah, is it gold? Uh, gold normally for me. Like, I like it proper strong. Yeah, as a, as a Yorkshireman should. This is it, you know, uh, my mother drilled it into me very early. Uh, you can't have it too milky, you know, like, uh, honestly, I, I get very upset when I see milk go in before the hot water. It's, uh, it's it, yeah. it gets put into you deep when you're a young Yorkshireman. There was, who, someone made me a tea the other day, I was at a gig, and they said, oh, do you want a tea? I said, oh, yes, please. And then <laughs> they, they'd made me one, and it was quite nice, it was fine. And then I, I went to... I was standing next to him when they were making a second one, and I was like, "What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Just putting the milk in first and leaving it for a while." I was like, "No, it's, you've done that wrong." It's crazy. You're stopping the brewing process. It really winds me up. Yeah, because there are some that are genuinely designed to. Uh, sorry, I've just, I've just put some milk into a tea that I've made here. Um, I wasn't sure. Yeah. I've got. A, I've got a new tea here and I wasn't sure um, if it is that sorry it's going to be gross <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't as elegant as I was hoping it might be there we go just lick, lick the base of the glass for the listeners I just um, I've just sexually assaulted a glass in a graphic manner <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's horrendous um, yeah it's, it turns out that's a black tea so I need milk but uh, Aye. I'm just going to... Yeah, get your calcium, lad. Yeah. Finished off the glass of milk. There we go. Lovely. Oh, that's nice. Um, sorry, what the fuck were you talking about? Um... <laughs> just tea, I think. <laughs> oh, it's gone off the rails early doors. Um, it generally does anyway. That's that sort of the thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, this one that I was having... So I, I used to get sent loads of... Um, I, well, I used to get in touch with people when they'd send me like free tea uh yeah and now i've got friends that are like you like tea here's tea for presents and so that works out quite well as well um yeah as soon as uh friends and family know you like one thing it's what yeah. you get forever i had to i had to put a real hard stop to fudge um being a thing because <laughs> like I, I like fudge right but i don't love fudge right I, I like and i used to like it a lot more than i do now like when i was a kid i liked yeah. it a lot but like my girlfriend told her parents that I was really into fudge, and I received kilograms of fudge for one Christmas. And like, even if I am gonna eat some fudge, I want a bite. I want one little bit of fudge, and then I'm done. It's incredibly sickly. Yeah. I had honestly, I had a, I had a kilo and a half of different fudges, and it. it I, there's still bars of fudge around my house. I don't eat that much of it. So I had to really gently bring up like, oh, thank you, that's so much. I haven't had fudge in years and all this and make it like clear that it wasn't something I constantly wanted. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my, aunt, my auntie got it into her head. I was a big fan of Little Britain because she bought me a DVD of it once. And then I just, every birthday and Christmas with Little Britain merch. Oh, no. So you just got to, you've got to, you got to stamp down on it hard you before it nip becomes it in the a thing. Yeah. The, yeah. I, Unless it's like tea and you genuinely do enjoy it. Well, that's it. I, I don't get given so much tea that uh, you know it's overbearing. So that's yeah. I don't. I think, I don't it also think lasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's got a good year and yeah. a half shelf life on it. This is it. I've got all my family onto cheese. Like, just get me a cheese box. You know, just get me some sort of selection of cheese, and I'll be very happy. So yeah. like, I'm trying to make that the thing people do now. But what if everyone gets you cheese? Isn't that too much cheese? And I'm delighted. No, no such thing. <laughs> this is Literally no, no such thing. Limit. Nah, I will smash it all in the week after Christmas, no matter how much you get me. <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah. No, I'm a, I'm a big cheese guy. No, I'm vegetarian now, so it's the only fun bit of food I get to eat. So oh, yeah. I'm obsessed with cheese. I, uh, I love cheese. I really love cheese. But if I eat too much, it, it quite drastically affects my skin. <laughs> Yeah, I do. I do think I might be lactose intolerant. <laughs> like, yeah. I have a lot of the symptoms, but I like cheese more than I like being healthy. So yeah, yeah. I'm just like, I just roll the dice. I'll take having the blotchy skin and the bad stomach in order to get that delicious brie. That's the thing. If it's not killing you, then 
it's so not so. worth finding out that you're lactose intolerant. Yeah, I'm not doing I'm not doing the test. <laughs> do, do you know what percentage of people are lactose intolerant? I don't. One hundred percent. Right. Okay. So I definitely am. Right. Yeah. It's just everyone sort of degree it's just, of it, Yeah. It's it? a spectrum, but yeah. Right. There's yeah. Right, some right, people right, are right. sort of so bad that they'll they'll be quite sick, but uh, you know right. we're not well, we're not designed to just... sort of process it beyond a certain age. But right. it's delicious. So what are we going to do? <laughs> this is it. Like, and I'm at the end of the spectrum where it's not causing me major problems. I just get very farty and have a weird poo. It's not that bad. As, you know, <laughs> yeah. I can handle it. I can deal with that for the sake of having a camembert. Yeah. This is it, mate. This is it. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, good. I don't know how we got onto that. Um, I've no I'll get idea, stuff for mate. Christmas. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Oh, I was listening to an older episode of uh, Pappy's the other day, and they were talking about this and. Uh, and they said, like, the best option is just to sort of slowly say to people, like, oh, yeah, that is nice. Do you know what I do like? And you just start telling them, it's exactly what you've done. You've done, you've done the right thing. Yeah. To start. You need to introduce something new. For yeah. Them to, because, you know, it is hard buying gifts for people you sort of half know. You yeah. Know, sort of like the extra people in your family and you only know, like, two things about them. So I'm just trying to tell them other things. The, unfortunately, the thing I like most is weed, but, like, no one will buy me that. <laughs> So I can't ask me nan for it for Christmas. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. What you do know you what I'd love this year, nan? A, a bong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I, I pray every day it goes legal so my Christmases can actually be what I would like. That's funny. Yeah. In the meantime, cheese. In the meantime, cheese will do. They very much go hand in hand, to be honest with you. Yeah. So, uh, if listen, if anyone that knows Rob is listening to this, and is wondering what to get him for a uh, secret Santa. There you go, bit of weed. Just a 20 bag, mate, that'll do me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Um, uh, so I was, uh, what's on your cup, by the way? Oh, it is, um, this is actually merch from one of my old, now defunct podcasts. I have several of them. It's the Bielsa Bible. It's about Marcelo Bielsa, former Leeds United manager. He's just been confirmed manager of Uruguay, and I am. Uh, beyond obsessed with the man. I think he's the most amazing man on earth. I've got a little Christmas ornament of him here. Amazing. I've got a full-on garden gnome. <laughs> I've, got, uh, I've got about eight different T-shirts. I've got hoodies. I, I am obsessed with the man to a scary degree. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's I'm got gonna a ask you... Lord's Prayer for Bielsa on the back. Oh, amazing. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to ask you for a photo uh, at the uh-huh. uh, at the end at, at some point. Like, just send me a, a, a selfie, like holding holding that cup that you're holding. But if you could also hold sure. that gnome, that would be amazing. I'll try and get it in shot. Yeah, I yeah. think people would like to see that. Yeah, I actually uh, I got sent that by the people who made it. It was dead sweet. I was making a lot of YouTube videos about Bielsa at the time. They sent me it to pop in the background. So I was made up. That's so great. shout out Bielsa gnomes. <laughs> amazing. Have yeah. you um, have you ever seen the inside of Nathan Caton's house? I haven't actually. No. Uh, now, are you aware of his of his obsession? What with Brentford? No, with uh, with uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh God! Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I've spoken to Nathan about this. He's yeah. obsessed with it, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, because I had him on the podcast, and I knew that he was into it. But like the room that he was recording from was just wall to wall. Uh, turtles. It was, I um, think I have seen him recording a video or something in a room like that. It looks like, yeah, like a six-year-old boy's room. Yeah. It? It's amazing. It's the advantage of being a comedian. You never have to grow up. You can just carry on being a Teenage Mutant Ninja Absolutely. Turtles fan forever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's delightful. I mean, I've got like, I've got a little dinosaur here. And uh, uh-huh. I've got some Lego over here. Well, I mean, I'm sitting next to my PlayStation. You know, it's, it's good. This is, this yeah, is yeah, yeah. Uh, adult... Uh, toys that sounds weird <laughs> yeah that's a kind of different thing mate. Yeah. <laughs> it's a different this is a different uh zoom chat to what you thought it was going to be isn't it <laughs> so show me your adult toys <laughs> i don't actually have any to hand uh, I, didn't no, know good. Was, I didn't know i'd need any prepared <laughs> yeah it's uh, to be honest it's not uh that's not normal <laughs> <laughs> yeah this tea party's taking a turn <laughs> yeah a, uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest, it's not even the weirdest turn that this show would have taken. But um... No, sure, it is weird doing uh, chats with people over Zoom. I did loads over lockdown. I did a show every day where I was like chatting to a bunch of comedians. And yeah. uh, one day, Simon Lomas brought out from his desk, he had a decommissioned handgun. 
just in his desk. I asked all the people on the Zoom, there was like five of us, I was like, what weapon would you use if someone attacked you right now? And like everyone was like holding up, you know, just something they had near them, like a big can of deodorant or whatever. Lomash just whipped out a gun. <laughs> She's like, all right, you win. <laughs> So, yeah, if you need the decommissioned military hardware, Simon Lomas is the comedian for you. I'll bear that in mind. I'll make a note. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in case that comes up. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. It was incredible. absolutely bizarre. Yeah. It's a fun question to ask people on these, though. Like, someone else whipped out a machete. I became deeply up, like, deeply worried about a few comedians after seeing what they had to hand. Yeah. Especially during lockdown. People are, <laughs> you know, people... This was it. Everyone was... Paranoid. Nerves were fraying. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, what would you use for a, for a weapon? Uh, right now, bare hands. No, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I've got a pint glass to hand that I used to work in a quite a rough boozer, so I've seen what they can do, so I reckon I'll go with that. Yeah. Because you can't beat a glass in sometimes, you know. You've got to keep it simple. That's it, yeah. You know, it's uh, sometimes sometimes you just got to glass someone in the face. That's, I'm from Essex, well, like, so yeah, I get a lot it. Of- yeah, yeah, a lot of the customers in my uh, old pub used to very much agree with that principle. Saw some wild fights in there. I, I walked in once and I saw a clown smash my boss over the head with a pool ball. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it was an eventful place to work, a little uh, North Yorkshire boozer. Amazing. Um, yeah. <laughs> there was uh, a friend of the show, uh, Matt Adlington, was uh, doing a um, a gig the other day in Milton Keynes. And uh, and he filmed a little bit of it, and he got the sound, but didn't get the actual video. Thankfully, I think it would have been horrendous. But he like the gig got off to quite a poor start. It was it was in a horribly set up pub, and sure. um, all of a sudden you just heard like smash, like a loud smash. Sounds like someone's dropped a pint. Turns out um, someone had got two pint glasses and gone either side of someone's head. Whoa, double glassing. Yeah. That's uh, that's to be honest, look, that's horrific, but also inventive. I've yeah. never seen a double glass in before. Like most people would think, one pint glass smashed over someone's head would suffice. It's probably even, you know, enough. the most severe slight. Yeah, but Christ, yeah. Like people, uh, I think people reach for that way too quickly without realizing how bad it could be. Like one of yeah. my colleagues got glassed, and like thankfully it was on the top of his head. He bled loads, and he was all right. It's one of those where you get someone in the eye or something. It's really like brutal thing to do. Oh yeah, I can't believe that happened at a comedy gig. Yeah, well, sort of a comedy gig. <laughs> it, it, right, it was it one of those where it's like a surprise gig? You know, like they're just yeah, in the pub much. and a gig happens. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. I've done plenty of those. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure we all have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh god, I did one. I remember in the outskirts of Chester, just in some village on a Saturday night. They hadn't charged people to get in. We were just performing in the corner of the pub while people Classic. were trying to have their Saturday night. And it was so bad. I think I told someone I hoped that... that, that yeah, that was the one I told someone I hoped that their house burnt down with them inside it. <laughs> Which gives you a measure of how well my set went. Yeah, I yeah. I finished on a song. It had gone that badly, <laughs> I finished on a song. And uh, do, do you normally have any songs? No, that's not a thing I've done before or since. Um, but it's just I, I, I realised I had about three minutes left that, that I had to do in order to get paid, and I couldn't be bothered telling jokes anymore. So I just did a song. Amazing! You just made it up on the spot. No, I did. Um, I love you, baby. I, think. <laughs> <laughs> I just like I just out. Of, I was just looking like oh, I just went. You're just too good to be true. <laughs> just trying to get a sing along going, but they hated me that much. They let me just sing it in silence. <laughs> it was absolutely just me in the corner, like na 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 na, na. <laughs> while they all just stared at me because I told them I all wanted them to die. Like what? F- oh God, comedy is a is a hell of a journey. Oh, isn't it just? Uh, yeah. only, only two weeks ago, did I suggest that a woman plays in traffic on the M4? Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, it's uh, it, you know, you never get away from it. No matter how long you do comedy, you will always encounter someone who you. I was at a show the other day. I was just uh, I went to see some Tom Segura uh, the other day, and it was great. Yeah, there was a guy in front of me who just was one of those idiots who just thinks the show is like a conversation between him and the performer. Yeah. So Tom Segura would say the premise for a joke, and this guy'd be like, "Ah, oh, yeah, I'm it, I'm it, and just talk to him about it. Like it's a big enough room that like he could ignore it, but like I couldn't. I was sat behind him, and I honestly spent a good thirty minutes just fantasizing about caving his head in with a big rubber mallet that he used for tent pegs. I just yeah. couldn't get that image out of my head. Just it did, did you have a mallet on? People... 
hand? Or... No, I just was wishing. Like, you know, I wasn't that tooled up for this so comedy specific. show I was going to. I know, I just thought it'd make a really satisfying thud as I smashed his big head in. <laughs> <laughs> I just, if I get annoyed to that degree, just, yeah, I just get very vivid fantasies about it. I never do any of them. I'm a very placid person. Yeah. But, oh, God, just uh, nice just that dream. level of, just constant talking through a show does me in so badly. And yeah. I've got less and less patient through the years. And it's not even their fault. I've been doing comedy for a decade. I've been at comedy shows for a decade. So I sort of feel like everyone should know by now. But they haven't been, you know, so yeah, it's just very not... much a me issue. But Christ, it's annoying, isn't it? It's, uh, it strikes me as bizarre, obviously, because, you know, uh, like, like like the both of us, you know, we've been involved in comedy in a while. Mm. Uh, I was watching comedy before as well. So I think I just yeah. knew. But then I say that, like, because I still encounter people who they're, they're going to their first ever comedy gig. And that kind of blows my mind. Yeah. But also, when I went to my first ever comedy gig... I was quite polite. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I've stuck it. with that. You're in a new, you're in a new environment where you don't know what's happening, and like you know, the, there are some people who would like you assume that what they should do is sit quietly and observe how it goes. Yeah. And there's some people who just have that thick person confidence where they're like, "Ah, oh, this is what this is." I assume I just chat all the way through, and if anyone tells me off, they're being a knob. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but you know, it's uh, and it was just a night off, so I didn't want to police the guy. I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> I do it enough myself, so I was just like, ah, yeah. I'm just going to sit and tolerate it and fume for the entire show. I um, uh, a couple of times because there's a gig down the road from me that uh, do you know Ross McGrain? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a gig that uh, Ross runs, and uh, and it's literally like a, a sort of a five minute drive, like fifteen minute walk, whatever, down the road. So it's very convenient. I go there all the time. And quite often, like, I'll be going on sort of later, just trying some new stuff and uh, and sitting at the back. And I'm quite a sort of an unintimidating person to look at. Um, and then there'll be people at the back chatting and I'll just walk over to them and go, sorry, guys, can can you shut up? And they turn around and look at me and they're like, why is this guy so confident? <laughs> got yeah, no yeah, idea. Yeah. Just, yeah, suddenly terrified you, of they me. don't know you. <laughs> yeah, but like they don't realise you're in an environment you're very comfortable in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm totally. Like, I will have a quiet word most of the time, but like, just uh, just sometimes people are so thick, you know, that there's just not going to be any helping, and you're yeah, just going to yeah, have yeah. an argument. It's sometimes you've just got to try p- and let it go. Pigeon on it. a chessboard uh, argument. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I was at a um, uh, Garth Marenghi book tour, uh, so it was like oh, a I... book reading the other day, and the whole second half, um, he was asking for like questions from the audience, and there was mm. this woman who so very obviously went to drama school just spent the whole time <laughs> I already have the going, whole picture me 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 like shouting out like me yeah, ask yeah. me and I was I just kept thinking I, I, I just from where I'm sitting I could kick her in the head <laughs> it's just it's so hard not to picture that stuff in it and it's just yeah it, it's it's wild they like uh those sort of people just like sucking it in all towards themselves it is uh, yeah it's incredibly infuriating yeah yeah, I think we just carpet bomb every drama school. Just get it done. That seems fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not no one more annoying than a drama student. No, and the thing is as well, if they graduated and then saw drama students, they'd go, "Yeah, fair enough, I understand." <laughs> so, you know, yeah, the, the, they, 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 they couldn't be annoyed. Yeah, to be fair, like it wasn't like I was an unpretentious prick when I was 19, but still, the drama students were worse. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, always. <laughs> So, how, right, how do you... I just realised where this conversation went on from. How do you make your tea? <laughs> <laughs> we'll circle back to that. Yeah. Um, I'm just the standard, you know, kettle, bag in, leave it to brew. Like, you know, it, the kettle's got to be immediately as it boils. Just the second it boils, it's got to be on the on the bag. Okay. Leave it to brew for a couple of minutes. Like, you can't you can't hassle the bag too early. You've got to let it sit. You've got to yeah. give it some time. And then two or three minutes, and then I'll squeeze it dry till it looks as dark as I can get it. Little splash of milk, not too much. You don't, you know, you're not making a hot chocolate. 
And then uh, I, I do treat myself to one sugar quite often. Oh, okay. You know, I tried to work, I tried to work it out. Like I've uh, I don't have sugar in my coffee anymore, but I just I just love it in a tea. So I still have one little cheeky spoon. I'm down from about three sugars when I was a younger man, though. You know, back that's in my good. fudge days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, just start, start slowly yeah. mentioning to people like I don't like sugar actually. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just gradually working it out. Yeah. But, uh, I don't drink as much tea as I drink coffee. I drink coffee all day, every day. But, yeah. uh, you know, I do love a brew still. Yeah. I uh, I wish I loved coffee, but I don't. I just dislike it. Yeah, I used to. I, I didn't really like it that much. And then I worked in Cafe Nero and I got uh, yeah. well into it. That'll and, do like, it. Now I'm like wildly addicted to caffeine as a result of that job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. that will uh, that will get you. But we like, need it as comedians though, as well, traveling a lot. Yeah, this is it. Like, yeah, there's a a lot of like late night driving and everything. Like, got to keep myself alert. So I've I've drink too many sugary drinks. Like, my big vice is like fizzy pop. I, like, I'm uh, I'm really bad for that. But I used to be really bad for cocaine, so I consider it quite a win. <laughs> to be honest with you, yeah, that that's now fair. it's just like. Yeah, now it's just a can of fizzy Vimto. I feel like, you know what? Like, it's progress of sorts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Better a can yeah. of Vimto than a can of cocaine. That's fair enough. This is it. I think that's a good slogan. Yeah. yeah. Tell the makers they can get that on the can. I can't believe they've not had that in adverts. <laughs> yeah, I know. But this is it. Like, I, I do like, I give myself a hard time sometimes about like uh, my vices like that, like eating, you know, too much sugary drinks and sweets and all like that. That I do look back at you know the things I've given up and replaced it with. I'm like, we're making progress. We'll yeah, gradually yeah. phase the sugary drinks down. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're making good steps. That's fair this enough. is it. You know, I don't drink alcohol anymore. It's been four and a half years since I drank oh, wow. booze. Well, well done. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll yeah, we'll keep on the fizzy drinks for now. But I am trying to wind them back because it is. It's too much. I'm obsessed with them. I like. I love going to like the little like uh, random European shops around me and just getting all the weird like foreign pops. I'm properly obsessed with getting some drink with writing I don't know on the side of it. Yeah. All the chemicals still in it. They've got no sugar tax in whatever country it came from. Get that stuff in me. Amazing. Uh, I mean, yeah. what's what's the best one you've had? My absolute favourite uh, soft drink is um, it's called Ka Fruit Punch. It's quite a common one. Uh, Ka Fruit Punch. Oh, yeah. uh, it's like Caribbean fruit punch, and it's just like sugary and sweet and fruity. It's my absolute favourite. Yeah. But anything with like berries, I'm a I'm a berry guy. Give okay. me a raspberry. Give me a black currant. I'm all over that. <laughs> but it's yeah. got to have like it's got to have foreign writing on it, so you know that there's the good stuff in it. It hasn't been sugar taxed <laughs> today. It's not been messed with. Yeah. Yeah, unadulterated. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I can't ride, read the ingredients, I know it's going to be a bagger. <laughs> I'm not convinced that's a, a, a good adage to live by. But <laughs> no, I also I also have a thing where I, I, I wholeheartedly believe that the dirtier a takeaway looks, the better the food will be. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> like, yeah, like you know, when when I see like a one star hygiene rating in a window, I'm like, oh hello. <laughs> yeah. I will judge a Chinese restaurant on how many uh, cats they've got in the window doing the old wave. Oh, 100%. You need a wavy cat. My favourite ever like Chinese takeaway used to be when I lived in London. I lived in uh, New Cross in South East London, and they, uh, it was a very dodgy bit of New Cross I lived on. And like, we lived sort of down this back alley off the main road. And opposite my flat, they opened up a new Chinese, and uh, they converted a laundrette to make it into this Chinese. But they didn't really bother doing a lot of the converting. They just sort of stuck some tarpaulin over the desk and covered up a couple of the washing machines. And then uh, they called it Chasing the Dragon, which is... <laughs> for, for, for a place that was very obviously a, dr- a drug money front, I thought it was quite ballsy. To yeah. be with it. But they made, they made the best special fried rice I've ever tasted in my I life. I bet they it did. unreal. The food was so good. Yeah, t- I kept going back for more. got really hooked to it. I don't know what it was. <laughs> <Very boring. laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I do kind of believe that. Like, you know, there is the a problem is once it, you've like, had it, like it, you'll never, you'll never have one that will taste the same again. So you're always just having more, aren't you? This is it. Yeah, <laughs> always going after that first one. <laughs> never quite the same. <laughs> oh. Amazing. Right, let's let's talk about your your, your special because. Um, you know, that's, yeah. That's, that's why why you're on it. Well, it's not. I just you know, it's nice to have you on it. But uh, 
where, where, where did you record it? Was it in a uh, somewhere where you had to keep was, shouting at people? No, well, it was it was great actually. It was um, I've been doing a bit of a tour with uh, my podcast colleague Freddie Quinn from a podcast, Dead Men Talking. We've been doing a tour, and we filmed it in Leeds at the Wardrobe. So it was a bit of a hometown gig for Wonderful. me. Wonderful, and uh, yeah, it was beautiful. You know, and like um, me and my producer Tom, who we work on the podcast with, are looking to set up a production company to film other people's specials because we love doing it. And like, um, so I've really worked on making this like beautiful. It looks gorgeous. Sounds great uh we're finishing editing it tomorrow yeah i'm really proud of it i think it's gonna be dead good like worked really hard on this it's been amazing year and a half in the making on the material i went out to australia for a couple of months like just running the show every every day to get it tight but yeah it's been mad uh, doing it in front of fans who actually know who i am it's the first time in my life i've been performing to people who were already aware of who i was yeah 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 that's so been uh it's, it's interesting, actually, because like in the, at the start of the special, it's not a massive spoiler, this, but like I sort of pretend I'm not vegetarian for the first five minutes in order to slag off vegetarians. <laughs> right. What was really interested, though, was comedy club gigs. People are like, yeah, get the vegetarians. I did it in front of our fans, and they were, they, I could see a lot of them being like, but he is. He is vegetarian. So I was like, oh, yeah, they actually know. I can't do this surprise. So that yeah. was a really interesting thing. But been dead fun. The show's been amazing. Been uh, dead cool. I'm actually off to Birmingham tonight as we speak. I'm off to do another tour show. Oh, lovely. So, yeah, it's been a really exciting time, mate. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be coming out sometime in the next couple of months. I know I should have a date to plug, but I don't. It's going to be on the Dead Men Talking uh, podcast page on YouTube. Um, so, yeah, just look out for it if anyone's interested. What's it called? It's called Born Ready, uh, and like, it's bit, like, the reason I've called it that is because there's an old video of me doing stand-up when I was like 18, I had a bit of a false start in comedy, and uh, in it, I, it's so cringy, I start off by saying, if you're ready for comedy, say I was born ready, and then the crowd does not say that, and I beg <laughs> them to, <laughs> and it's, it, it, it makes me cringe inside out even thinking about it and uh, basically our fans found that and uh, a video of Freddie doing stand-up when he was dead new and have been ruining our lives with it ever since so Amazing. I thought in order to claim it back I will call my show Born Ready as a nod to that <laughs> so yeah that's when uh, so yeah basically I just had to claim my own bullying from my own fans <laughs> yeah that's fair enough isn't it yeah where's it going to be available so it's just going to be on YouTube. Um, cool. I just put stuff. I, like, I properly believe in just putting everything out, just free for people to find. Well, I just want people to see it, you know. Yeah. And uh, Netflix weren't calling, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we did, we have shot it to Netflix standards, though. We actually went through their standards document oh, and yeah? like shot shot it to that degree. We've used cinema cameras, you know. We've gone Amazing. to that level with it. Um, yeah, I think it's like it's properly cool. I'm really pleased with it. So, but yeah, like um, just YouTube. Yeah, like it's where I put all my stuff. I've already got another special up on there called uh, Too Big to Fail. It's already on YouTube. So, you know, if you can't wait for the new one, check that one out in the meantime. Isn't it? There you go. Yeah, watch uh, that continuously until. But, um, until that'd be great. Yeah, just it. leave it running. But I, uh, yeah, I just, I really love YouTube. I think it's amazing. And I think it's so good for comics. And I'm like, just all in on it, basically. Yeah. There's a lot of people brought out um, a, a lot of great um, uh, specials and put them on YouTube recently. And it's, uh, it's I think, it's like, honestly, resource. like, it's, it's as, it's as good as any other platform for stand up specials now, YouTube. Like, some of the ones on there, like, uh, Shane Gillis last year put his out on there, and it's, it was the best special of the year for my money. Carl oh, Kinane yeah. this year has put one out on there that I think is the best one I've seen this year, and I've watched everything, you know. Um, yeah. There's just loads of people putting amazing top quality stand up out on there, because, like, just it's it's amazing to just be able to make something and just put it out and just give it to people directly without having anyone else's input on it. It's really yeah, like yeah, freeing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you you're your own editor. Yeah, totally. I mean, I literally am. I'm literally editing it. Yeah. So you know, you get that full like control over it, and you can make something exactly how you want to do it. Yeah, like, I really love that about it. That's that's part of why I got into stand up anyway, because I I was in bands for years, but also like sure. Uh, I always felt like I had uh, opinions on things that were sort of like a bit weird and a bit different to sort of how other people were looking at things. Mm. And I thought, I want to be able to say that. And like, there's, that's, that's what I love about stand-up is you can say, <laughs> contrary to popular belief, you can say whatever you want. 
Uh, oh, literally anything. That that does my head in when people complain like that, like, oh, you can't say anything nowadays. Because, like, I am doing all the time, saying everything I want to say. <laughs> yeah. And, like, horrific jokes, like things that are, sh- are not okay to say. I am constantly make horrifically inappropriate jokes. And all that happens is I get more successful. You know? <laughs> it's like... <laughs> I'm I'm just sick of all the moaning in comedy from people who are claiming someone else is stopping their career. Like no one is stopping your career but you right now. Like you've got you've got a phone that's connected to the internet. You can make stuff. Just get out to people. You know, yeah. you're not being held back because there are brown people on TV now. You're not being held back because women are getting opportunities. You know, and vice versa, you're not getting held back because of your identity really anymore. I think just in general just take your chances and go and stop fucking moaning, yeah. you know? Like, the chances so are, complaining. If you're being held back by the things that you're saying, it's because the things that you're saying are shit. Yeah, this is it. There is a whole market. Of, there are thousands of people who love messed up dark jokes, but they also don't want you to be a twat. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's, there's that, you know? And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of unfunny people complaining a lot. <laughs> like, it's really annoying. And, like, I just... Uh, so yeah, just get on with it. Don't worry about it. The worst thing that's going to happen is someone on Twitter is going to like you know have a go and say mean things about you. And uh, what you do in that instance is turn your phone off. <laughs> yeah, it's not stop that looking. big a deal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you know, like there are like extreme cases where people like I hate seeing it when people like uh, they've had a bit of a controversy and people start trying to contact their venues and get their shows cancelled and stuff like that. That I think is like too far. But I think that's rare, and you can always work around it. You just find another venue. You know, I just, yeah. uh, I really want to just do my own stuff and ignore all that noise, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, the the first place that I became aware of you, uh, well, the first place I uh, saw you was um, at Hate and Live, which is just... Oh, yeah, I love that show. Yeah. Yeah, it's the best. It's And, like, that is, yeah, exactly it. It's like, that show is designed to be deliberately offensive and horrible like it's baked into the format of the show yeah like for anyone who doesn't know uh, basically the audience suggests things uh, topics and the comedians have to uh, riff jokes on why they hate that thing so obviously then the audience understands that they'll make it really nice things that are really horrible like really hard to hate and then you look like a dick having a go at them you yeah. know it'd be like national treasures and you know, lovely things. So, like, that's so much fun, that show. And it was really, like, formative for me, actually, as a comedian, because uh, my first ever Edinburgh I did, I went up and just did a, like, I was doing, like, a little little free show by myself in a weird little venue, and uh, I was doing Hate and Live as much as I could because it was so much fun. And, like, um, I would just get I would just get hammered and go riff and have loads of fun. And someone came to my solo show, and they they came up to me afterwards, and they were like, "And that solo show wasn't good. It was the first thing I'd ever tried to do. It's sort of piecing all together my bits of club material yeah. into trying to make a narrative, you know, and trying to do an Edinburgh show like people do." Uh, so I thought you were going to attack someone then. <laughs> no, 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 that's my weapon. My weapon of choice. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's a back yeah, yeah, scratcher. If you get an for, itchy burglar for the yeah, listeners. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, someone came up to me after the show, this guy, and he was like, look, mate, I just wanted to say, like, I enjoyed the show, it was good, but last night at Hate and Live, you were amazing. And I was like, ah, I really want a thought on that. And I was like, yeah, it's because I wasn't trying to be anything there. I was just trying to be funny. I wasn't trying to do what I was meant to do. Yeah. I was just letting it go. And it really changed the way I do comedy and uh, made me a much better comic for it. You know, just that, that freedom and just leaning into not trying to do the right thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Doing doing your own thing. That's I think that's a, um, it's important for a lot of people, really, because um, but there's, I'm always impressed when I see like weird acts because I mean they might be shit, but they're doing it. They're just doing whatever they want to do, and it's, it's yeah, it's I love that. Extremely shit. respectable. Cause, yeah, totally. I, I love any art that is made for its own sake. You yeah, know, like I, I love like street art and folk art and just stuff where it's just someone making something for the love of making it. And I absolutely adore open mic comedy for that. I love all the lunatics. Yeah, like, I, uh, I host I host Beat the Frog at the um, Frog and Bucket in Manchester, like a gong show. Yeah, uh, like semi regularly, and I love doing that because you just it's unfiltered. You get you know you see some people who are like amazing new acts who like restore your faith in comedy and you're like oh great they're gonna be yeah. amazing in a couple of years 
And then you just see some lunatics and you're like, how did you think that was funny? But then you see some people just doing the weirdest stuff and it works and it's just, it's joyful. I love that. Yeah. Like, I, uh, I really love weird alternative comedy. You know, like, I, that's what I go watch when I'm at comedy festivals. I go watch stuff that's very different to what I do. Yeah. Yeah, because you won't see it anywhere else. This is it, yeah. I love that stuff, and I, uh, I just love that people are doing it. I think it's amazing. There's a really amazing like alternative comedy scene in the north at the moment, actually. Like, oh, there's loads of really great people doing just really weird, mad stuff. Like uh, Sean Morley uh, is like doing loads of stuff, and like Jane Edwards, and uh, yeah, just like loads of people. They're, they're, like, they've got a whole crew. They're making like um, I wish I could remember what their like group was called because like uh, it's awesome, and they make like dead cool stuff. But, um, yeah, Mandatory Redistribution Party is a podcast that they uh, do. It looks like very left-wing politics done in a really surreal way. It's really mad. Uh, yeah. and, like, I love that stuff. And, like, they made a computer game called Escape the North, which is, like, this interactive computer game people could play over Twitch. And I was, like, blown away by the creativity of it. I just think it's really cool. That's amazing, yeah. Yeah. Like, so there's loads of that stuff going on up here. And, like, it's sort of entirely separate to what I do, but I... Uh, like, I, I mean, I think it's really cool. I just think yeah. it's uh, ace that there's mad stuff going on. Yeah, the people have just got the ideas and they're just running with it. This is it, totally. I can respect that massively, yeah. Yeah. Uh, obviously, like, you just listed sort of several different acts and sort of... Um, uh, uh, and things that you you like watching and, and all that. And, and it reminded me that you... Uh, you, you put out and it's a, a thing that's really stuck with me but you put out a, a status a little while ago sort of a very impassioned um plea to just share each other's content amongst comedians yeah it's one of my biggest bugbears in comedy is um how like uh comedians are very like they're very a lot of comedians are very insecure and they sort of i think they think if they share too much of other people's stuff it will somehow detract from their own things when the opposite couldn't be more true. Like yeah. the way like things work has just changed so wildly in the last decade. And people are still stuck in the mentality of before when comedians were all competing for the same three spots on a panel show. But now like there, there is infinite internet. There is enough internet for everyone. And like just sharing each other's stuff has such a powerful effect. Like all of my stuff that's done well is because other comedians have shared it. And like I've got a load of mates who are awesome at this and totally understand it. Yeah. And they tend to be the ones who are doing very well. But there's comedians who are told by their agents or just, you know, by their own instincts to just not share things. And like so they feel like there's sort of a, a, a limit on how much they can share on social media. Yeah, yeah. If you look at my Twitter page, I'll share like nine, ten different comedian stuff a day. Yeah. I'll just if I see something good, I share it. Because, like, it's a win for everyone. Like, they get, like, you know, the, the comedian who I've shared their stuff, obviously it's an easy win. They get in front of more people. The people who follow me get to see great comedy, and I end up with more followers because people follow me because they know they'll see yeah. great comedy all the time. Absolutely. It's a win for everyone, and it costs literally nothing. And it just really winds me up when I see people being... People are too uh, transactional with it as well. They'll be like, well, they didn't share my thing, so I'm not going to share that. Yeah. I don't know or remember who shared any of my stuff. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Like As soon as you start thinking about it in that little way, you're, you're missing the overall point because you're bogged down in that tiny thing. And I just think like we sort of own the means of production now, comedians. We're, like The power is in our hands. And it's only through being like scared like that that we'll mess it up. So <clears throat> I just think we need to, yeah, just have that sense of community more and like uh, yeah. boost each other up. You know, it, it helps everyone. Like, because people can watch more than one podcast. Like, me sharing my mate's podcast doesn't stop people listening to mine. You know? No, absolutely. Because they've seen one stand up. They're not like, ah, oh, I've got one stand up I like actually, so I don't need any more. Like, I'm a fan of comedy. I, I'm a fan of, like, 50, 100 comedians. You yeah. Know? It's like, it's it, it yeah, it's just, a, it's just a weird scarcity mentality that I just really want to try and bully out of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. like it was the only way that it's going to happen. Because it's a genuinely beautiful, positive thing that's happening, and uh, loads of comedians understand it and are doing that. And in all art forms, you know, it's not specific to us. But, yeah, it just really... Uh, it annoys me seeing good stuff not get shared by people. I'm just like, come on, yeah. just hit that retweet button. It costs you literally nothing. Yeah, that's it. But, I, you know, I, it. I see people put out like brilliant, like I, I saw 
a thing the other day. Like someone had made what, to my mind, was the perfect joke for Twitter. I can't remember what mm. it was now, but uh, I, like, I retweeted it. I was like, "This is this is perfect." And yeah. it's like it it just didn't, it didn't get the recognition it deserved. And I was like, "That yeah. is sad," because it's so I'm easy like, yeah, to just... just go, "That is good." Bam, one like. Yeah, and That's we've up. got like you know we've all got a bunch of people following us who are into comedy. And like want to see funny stuff, and it can just give it that head start. You can just give that, you know, like if you get twenty comedians who've all got a decent following sharing something, it gives it just you know it gets it in front of a load of people to get it started yeah. online. You know, like um, yeah, my last special did really well because loads of comedians shared it, and basically no other reason. You know, there was my promo is nothing other than going on other people's podcasts, talking to them, you know, being shared by other comedians. That's all I do and it works. Yeah. So it's just people just need to realise they can they can be involved too. But like there's too much where, you know, rather than sharing something, there'll be a snide comment underneath. And like I don't I don't get into that. I'm not gonna have like beefs with people on Twitter because they've put a snide comment. But I do kind of remember it, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm just like, okay, you've ch- you've made your choice. I just, uh, I don't know. It's it, it it annoys me because there is uh, just this brave new world that we can just grab if we're just brave enough to do it. You know. Yeah. We just need to get rid of all the old industry machinations and just do stuff ourselves, and it's so much better. Yeah, yeah. That I think seeing you write that, like I would, I was already sharing people's stuff anyway, but like seeing that. I think changed my attitude towards a lot of things, and like I've I've I've, I've been able to find uh, joy in other people's success a lot more. Um, That's great because it becomes less of a, a competition. Because and a, a similar thing happened. Um, I was I was talking to a, a comic a little while ago, um, who um, uh, for the sake of the story, she's female. Um, I mean, she is female. I don't know why it's not just for the sake of the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But uh, I said to her, like, oh, that gig's brilliant. Like, how'd you get on that? In Because we asked that question in a sort of a, I, I'd like to do that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and she basically said, you know, like, oh, like I knew this person from this thing and, and, and whatever. And like, it's just a little bit of who you know. But And she also pointed out, but you've also got to bear in mind that we're appealing to very different demographics. And I was like, yeah, of course yeah. we are. Like, of course. And it, it makes yeah, it a, totally. a much less bitter pill to swallow that we're not getting sort of this gig or that gig yeah 100 percent. and like it, the, th- the thing to like remember now is like uh, other comedian success is only a win for you like if my, for my mates like do well then i go on their podcast it's got more fans for me to talk to yeah yeah, you know? yeah. it's like the, the rising tide raises all ships has never been more true totally like especially if you look at like the podcast scene in the northwest right now it's like, I genuinely think it's like an amazing thing that's happening. Like uh, all my mates are blowing up with their own different variations on podcasts. Yeah, and it's all because we support each other. We all share each other's stuff. We all build each other up. And there's this beautiful like. There's genuinely no rivalry. Like we take the piss out of each other all the time. Yeah, and of course. I'll constantly have a go at Jamie Hutchinson and pretend there's this mad rivalry between our podcasts <laughs> and it's dead fun to stoke it and have a go at another one and have a word and all that. But we're all dead good mates and it's genuinely boosted all of us. You know, like uh, my podcast wouldn't be anywhere without having a word, um, giving us like a head start and like giving us that like lift off to yeah. immediately get going. And yeah, it's just a, it's, it's just a beautiful thing that like just a group of mates can just uh, do that for each other now. Yeah, and uh, there's there's zero sniping in competition. It's genuinely lovely. So we've got uh, we've got a, a lovely scene in South End as well, where there's mm. sort of uh, various comics, and we've all been going roughly the same length of time. Uh, but sure. so, some are sort of finding more success here and there, and doing sort of one thing or another. Uh, and like we're you know we're all sort of raising each other up. I think the the the, the biggest one at the minute is um, Jordan Gray is one of ours. Um, oh right cool yeah that's a great one to have and she's yeah, doing great. fucking well <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. she's not had a bad year as jordan no she's done all right yeah yeah just yeah, won two yeah. baftas yeah that'll do yeah it's not bad is it <laughs> yeah it's all right yeah, yeah i don't think jamie hutchins has got a bafta yet <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's just that the whole uh just the way everything operates has changed so fundamentally that i think um People got used to the old model of how comedy works and they still sort of chase that. And I think like there's a lot of people chasing a declining industry rather than just jumping yeah. on board with sticking stuff online and going. 
Yeah. I mean, that's where everything is. Like, um, this is it. Um, a, a good mates with uh, Mark Simmons, and I was talking to him a little while oh, ago. Perfect example. Yeah. Like, Mark is such a perfect example of just smashing it. Because, like, there wasn't also, like... The sort of people who were doing well online weren't really like one liner guys until like Mark blowing up like that, you yeah. know, like and posting his videos constantly on TikTok. And just, I, I was uh, gigging at Hot Water recently and he was doing his tour show in the uh, big room. I was doing the show in the little room upstairs. And it was so sick to just see this full room of people. They're all queuing up for photos with Mark afterwards yeah. and stuff. Because Mark's like a, a great dude. He's a really sound guy. Such a lovely guy. In years, he's been toiling away and then just uh, by going all in on that he is now a big touring act selling yeah. like a major amount of tickets like Simmons is shifting some tickets oh yeah and it's so cool but then you look at like Milo McCabe like he's been yeah. doing Troy Hawk for years he's amazing brilliant character comedian he goes and stands outside a shop and starts welcoming people in. Yeah. And suddenly he's world famous, you know? There's no one route, and I think that's what's so exciting about it as well. You never know what the thing will be that set, like blows people up. Yeah, just got to keep like, trying stuff. This is it. Keep throwing stuff at the wall. And like the great thing for people like that is if someone sees one of their clips go viral, when they go see them live, they're going to have a great time because they've been a comic for ages and they yeah. know how to do it. So like, if you go see uh, a Milo McCabe Troy Hawk show, it's brilliant. Mark Simmons, if you love daft little one-liners, you're going to get him, you know, he's great at that. Yeah. So I just think, like, it's you use the online stuff as the way of people finding you, and then, like, for me, it's all just about getting them to live shows. That's yeah. where, you know, that's what I love. But, yeah, I think Mark's a great example. It's really inspiring what he's done. And I, 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 yeah, I think it's, um, it's also indicative of the sort of the, uh, the, the current sort of comedy climate as well, because uh, I was talking to him about TV stuff, and he said um, that he's just not, he's not trying to get TV stuff anymore because he just yeah. started getting, he was doing uh, like Mock the Week fairly regularly and he was just sure. starting to get some other bits. And then he's gone, oh, I don't need that actually. I'll knock that on head and concentrate on online stuff. And he's smashed This is it. it. Look, it, don't get me wrong. Like, if someone wants to offer me a bunch of money to go on a telly show, I yeah. am there. But I am well aware that no one is queuing up to do that, you know? And it, I don't care. Like, I had an act uh, a while ago in a green room ask me, like, like they just, like, released, like, the list of who was going to be on live at the Apollo that year. And they were mm. like, how do you cope with, like, being overlooked for stuff like that? They were a bit down about it. And I just, like, I had to think about it. It's like, oh, I literally never think about it. I literally don't care yeah like, it doesn't matter to me i'd love to go on because you you know my mum knows what it is and it's cool and you, you get paid really well so that'd be yeah. great but apart from that i've got so many mates who've been on loads of tv shows and have you know i had a mate who literally went on live at the apollo and they got i think 70 new followers on twitter then next week they went on have a word and got 500 that's insane you know, it's it, it's the game has totally changed yeah. and like podcast fans are so much better than like tv comedy fans because on tv people are just uh no one's like an obsessive have uh like an obsessive live at the apollo fan no one's like yeah. you know every week every episode i'm watching them all I've got live at the apollo t-shirt you know they're gonna go see it live anyone who's ever been on it there are people like that for podcasts you know, they are, they are tuned in, they are actively engaged. Like, rather than, like, just flicking through a channel when you're home from the pub and just you're sticking whatever on, that you know, they're, they're, they love it, they're part of it. Yeah, they, uh, there's they, more they ways to interact as well. Time. Totally, and it's um, they that's where all the real obsessive comedy fans are. And, like, speaking of people who've never been to comedy before, there's loads of people who are now podcast fans who were never engaging with stand-up. They didn't realise they yeah. would love comedy until this found them through their fucking social media algorithms. And, you know, there's loads of things that are, are negative about it, and I'm sure there are things that are harmful to the art of stand-up in some ways, but I think, like, the benefits are so amazing that I just... I fully, a few years ago, like... Uh, after my first Edinburgh, it was, like... I'm, the industry made it very clear that I wasn't what they were looking for. Yeah. You know? Like, people would treat me with contempt when they heard my accent and it wound me up so rotten. And I was angry about it for a while. And then I just right, I had this realisation of like, look, I can be angry about that or I can just do something else. I can just find my own path, you know, and I just did that. And now, yeah, TV just doesn't interest me. It's not, it's not the end goal. It's not something yeah. I'm working towards. I'm not hoping that if I build my podcast enough, I'll get on telly. Couldn't care less. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it, like, a very cool time many, to be 
producing it's stuff. It's amazing time. I think it's the best time there has ever been to be a comedian. It's why the moaning winds me up. Like, it's genuinely <laughs> yeah. a golden age right now. There has never been more comedy produced by more great comedians. There have never been more comedy fans. There have never been more ways to access it. There's never been more types of comedy. There's never been more people selling tickets to their own shows than there is now. I think it's a genuinely an amazing time, and I'm, like, really excited to be part of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Right, I think that is a uh, good time into. Uh, I'm, I'm going to move on to some questions because I, I do some, and they're, they're well, they're nonsense to be honest. They're nonsense questions. Sweet, because pe- people listen to this that uh, that really like tea, and then they'll uh-huh. be like, "Well, there's not an, not a lot of chat about tea, hence the tea questions early doors." But like that, I normally yeah, yeah, ask yeah. them now, and we've we've spent it. I'll tell you uh, for the sake of uh, for the sake of the tea fans, um, I my sister sent me a uh, a. A, a little uh, selection box of interesting teas for Christmas. Uh huh. Um, and this is from English Tea Shop, and it's uh, chocolate, rooibos, and vanilla, uh, and it was delicious. Okay. Yeah. A it's chocolate like, tea that is new on me. Yeah. Well, it it wasn't that chocolatey. It smelled quite chocolatey, but sort of like uh-huh. it, the the vanilla came through quite nicely. Uh, yeah. and like the sort of everything else in it like came through and it's uh, yeah it's nice just it, but like there was okay. a, a a very uh, sort of black tea flavour to it as well it's good yeah, yeah. I'd recommend it yeah fair enough I'm not a massive like herbal tea guy I'm pretty much uh, a Yorkshire ultra yeah but you know I will on occasional dabble with a fruit tea but very yeah. rarely to be honest with you I well there was another one had I known your obsession with uh, with berries uh, there was a, a super berries one right next to it and that, but I'll, I won't win oh, this one that's but that's the one I'd be picking out of the pack definitely yeah well um, it's still there so if you're in south end uh, <laughs> well I'm, I'm going to drink it so you can't have it <laughs> all right I best be quick then yeah 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 uh, yeah nice uh, I, I'd I'd recommend it well that's the that's the tea portion of the uh, of, the, of the tea party <laughs> It's just the the tea part is just about having a chat. Is really that's yeah exactly. You know, yeah, yeah. No, nobody goes to, to facilitate conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just an angle to get sent free tea. To be honest, um, hey mate, I, I can't knock the hustle. Yeah, but nobody goes to afternoon tea and says, "Oh, do you remember the tea? That was nice." You're thinking that was a nice cake, and we had a lovely chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a couple of my my favourite ones. Yeah, no worries. If you had to have a barcode tattooed on you, uh, uh-huh. and it was the barcode for any product, what barcode would it be? Oh well, I mean, look, I've already got quite a lot of dodgy tattoos, so it wouldn't really uh, stick out that badly, to be honest with you. Uh, barcode for a product. I think uh, one of my mates nearly got a barcode tattooed on the back of his neck when he was 16 as some sort of like rage against the machine sort of political statement. Like, Amazing. Oh, I'm just a product, man. So I thank, I thank God every day for him that that never happened. But what would I have? Like, what's like my product that I like, I love? I don't know, man. Like, it could I, either uh... be something useful or something that represents you. Like, so for instance, yeah. the reason that I came up with this was, um, I, was uh, I was buying some cream eggs. Because it was that time of year, uh-huh. and like the barcodes on those are all folded in on themselves, and I was like, just imagine if I had the barcode tattooed, just boop, that'd be yeah, easy. And you could just go, yeah, yeah. Uh, like cream eggs is definitely not going to be it, man. I can't have more than one of those. I have like one cream egg a year, yeah. Like you know, I'm about that rate. Like if it's if it's chocolate, I'm going to Snickers bar. Like I think it is the best chocolate. I have that very regularly. Like I just think it can't be beaten. It's your uh, it's your, my baseline standard chocolate bar. I don't know. Like, what does my? Th- this is the problem with me trying to remember stuff. As soon as I hang this up, I'll, be like, I'll think of eighteen things. That yeah, I'm like, yeah. Ah, that that's the one I could do. To be honest with you, I'm a I'm I'm a bit of an obsessive about like clothes and shoes and stuff like that. So uh, maybe the new uh, trainers I've just bought would be the one. It's like, but I'm you've not already bought into, like, them. Super- I have already bought them. That is true. Yeah, if we're doing it for a practical <laughs> thing on a regular purchase, then that isn't going to be that useful. To be honest with you, I tell you what, this is boring as hell. But I'd have my Tesco club card because I forget it every time, and like it shot. really annoys me that Tesco have now made it so like uh, this is a big old man bugbear for me. 
They've made it so in order to get any of the deals, you've got to have a club card, and it annoys me. And I don't want to have one. I don't know what, like, there's a Bill Burr bit about where he's, like, talking about, like, I don't know what they're doing with that data, but I know it's something I don't want happening. <laughs> and, like, I feel exactly like that about it. So I've got my missus's uh, club card that I use so they can't yeah. get me. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there was a guy who actually tattooed uh, a Tesco club card on himself, actually. He got a QR code. Really? Uh, and I think, yeah, funny. weird dude. I um, mean, yeah. <laughs> It is a lot that because at some point that technology is going to evolve and QR codes won't be a thing. Yeah, yeah, It's not yeah, like yeah, they've yeah. been around forever, is it? They're not immutable technology. Yeah, so, he'll he'll uh, just look like yeah. the 2018 version of Hitman. Yeah, or uh, season ticket at Ellen Road would be useful if we could just scan my hand in order to get into the ground. That'd be lovely. Yeah. Um, but in general, I'm kind of against getting technology in me or on me. I'm a bit. Uh, I've watched too many episodes of Black Mirror. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. So, uh, so do you reckon look, season pass for? Yeah, well, I don't actually have a season ticket anymore. I lost it a couple of years ago when I moved to Brighton, and I thought I could get it back because you could at the time. So now I'm on a waiting list, but I still go every game. Yeah. And I just, uh, I just, I go and stand in where my season ticket seat used to be. I just go stand <laughs> with my mates, no matter where my ticket is. It's fine. Everyone knows me around that bit. It's grand. So we still squeeze up a little bit. Nice. Yeah. I, I don't know if you remember. We 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 have actually gig together. Uh, you and I. It was mm-hmm. uh, uh, hot water. Um, oh right, yeah, yeah. Few few years ago, uh, quite yeah. quite a few years ago. But it was just it was mm. one of the sort of the tryout nights, and I heard nothing back. Right. But okay, was, fair yeah, enough. But it's one of the. Um, I think it was like right around the time that uh, Paul Smith had just blown up, and uh, yeah. and he was at the venue down the road. Right, yeah, it's when they had two venues. Yes, that is a few years ago now. Yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah, like that is it. Like Paul's another exactly perfect example of that. You know, he was the archetypal first one to like blow up off the internet. Yeah, and, like he's doing crazy well now. Sells huge venues all over the country. Yeah, and, it's amazing. Uh, no one in TV knows who he is. It's really <laughs> yeah. mad. I've had, I've had, so I've had mates who've been in meetings with TV producers and suggested Paul as someone to be on it, and they've been like, "Who's that?" He sells arenas. You know, it's crazy. That's like so how, mad. Uh, sort of ignored and overlooked this huge thing is in the north of England. You'd also think, so, yeah, think like, if you work for TV and you're trying to get, like, the next big thing, pay attention to in- the internet because <laughs> they've, they've got some stuff. Think. <laughs> You'd think. But, uh, no, it's very much not how it works in the uh, comedy industry because, like, they're very much like holding on to the model where they all get paid to go for a piss up at Edinburgh and then sign whoever has the saddest show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Who cries the most? See that? Yeah, and look, you know, some of the, and some of those sad shows are absolutely brilliant, done by amazing comedians. But it's not necessarily the best way to book someone for a panel show. You know, no. it's a very different skill. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, you know, yeah. Paul is exactly that, and it's um, it is funny. Like I, I, uh, I, when I used to drink, I had a big like drunken conversation with Paul, where I was like, Paul, you're too good to just stay at hot water. You need to get out there, get out there on the road, and like let people see you. <laughs> And then, like within like two years, Hot Water started posting his videos online, and he was selling arenas. And I had to go for quite a groveling apology. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I got that one wrong, mate. All right, fair enough." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, if it um, if it helps you at all, uh, there's a lot of people that've been on this podcast have um, it's, it's been just before they've risen to a meteoric fame. So let's uh, go. All right, this there is, we this go. This is the launch pad. The secret yeah. sauce. I had, uh, yeah, yeah. I had Jordan on early days, uh, Rosie there Holt. There we go. Um, there we go. Yeah, who else? I don't know. If so, I can get so. a little bit of that secret sauce, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, Mark Simmons as well. Like, yeah, just go, just yeah, before yeah. he kicked off. It's great, you know. So, nice. uh, I'm pretty sure yeah, it's yeah. me. That's, uh, yeah, it sounds... I'm, it sounds uh, I'm still here. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You're the facilitator. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 I can. Uh, like, when I'm older, I can't tell crazy stories about what I've done, but I can tell crazy stories about what I've uh, what I've created. <laughs> oh, you heard of them? I knew them. Yeah. Mm. Right. Okay. I like this one. Uh, what jobs would you make national service? So, when I ask that, oh, like, right. I, I used to work at Screwfix. I'm with you. And I think yeah. people should work there. It's the same as anyone who drives a car. I think anyone who drives a car should also ride a motorbike just so that you become aware that motorbikes exist. Like, you, you view the yeah. roads differently. 
Uh, and sure. I think anyone should work at Screwfix just so that they can learn what things are because there are some fucking idiots that don't understand. Oh, uh, I hear you. I, I genuinely just think it should be any minimum wage job for two years and there can be no parental support. I think that would fundamentally transform our entire society if rich people had to actually live on minimum wage for a couple yeah. of years and understand what that experience actually is and how miserable and soul destroying and hard it can be like you know i, I i've had every shit job going like I, i've worked in pubs and cafes and warehouses i was a gardener i've uh, worked in shops you know i've done everything uh like i, I, and I got fired from them all because i was terrible <laughs> at it but like i do think it's like a, a fundamental experience just like just being skint is what people need. You know, yeah. they need that experience of not being able to call someone to bail them out, just like not having that option. I think it would very much fundamentally change government policy were that the case. And like just working in any, it's got, I think it should be a service job though. You've yeah. got to be working with the public. You know, you've got to be dealing with people because like you can always tell someone who used to work as a waiter or as a bar person in a bar when you're serving them. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always take my glasses back to the bar. I always tidy up my little area where I've been sat when I go because I know some poor twat's going to have to do it in a minute and they're probably knackered and underpaid. Yeah. So you just like little things like I tip very well always because like I know how shit it is working in like you know low income jobs and like how good it is when someone just uh, you know shows that appreciation and how helpful that is. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe a pizza delivery guy, late night, something like that, just something where it's hard yeah. work, you know, yeah. It's relentless, yeah, like, tired. This is it. Get talked to like yeah. shit. And, yeah, I think that'd be really good for everyone. Like, whenever I see someone being rude in a shop, I'm like, you have no idea. You have yeah. no idea or the person on the other end of that. Or even, like, I used to work in call centres, about all that, and people would go mental at you. And what people don't realise is no one hates the company you're complaining about more than the person you're complaining to. Yeah. You know? Like, if you work there, you hate them more than anyone. Like, you know, but I couldn't sit on the phone and go, yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, terrible company. Yeah, yeah. you should shop somewhere else. I wasn't allowed. <laughs> but, you know, I totally get it. And uh, their rage, I was just be like, yeah, but, you know, doesn't need to be at me. Yeah. yeah, I think any sort of national service for jobs, I think, is a great idea. Uh, actual military national service is a terrible idea that only old Very twats who so. never actually had to do military national service espouse. It's always people who are in that generation who didn't do it. That's what winds me up. Yeah, yeah, bring yeah. Bring back national service. It's like, did you do national service? No, so shut up. Yeah, and it's too late yeah. for you to do it now, isn't it, you old fuck? Exactly. Now your knees are gone. <laughs> now you're suddenly full of big yeah. ideas. Yeah. Yeah, I had a, a mate who was Cypriot when I was at uni who uh, went back to Cyprus over Christmas and didn't come back for the rest of the year because he got conscripted for national service. Bloody he hell. He had to uh, fate a men mental breakdown to get out of it. It was wild. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm glad we don't have that system. But putting people in like normal, regular jobs where they have to experience what it's like to live real life, I think that would be very good for them. You know. Yeah. So... Yeah. Uh, Pizza delivery guy, do you think, is your... Pizza delivery guy's right up there. Just just barman or waiter, just any sort of service industry job. You know, working on the customer service desk at Argos was brutal. Just anything like that, anything where you've got to deal with people all yeah. day, you know. Yeah, yeah. In fact, no, the, the number one takeaway that is open till 3 a.m., that, that is one of the most brutal jobs I can imagine. Yeah. Dealing with people post-pub, hammered, trying to buy fried chicken. Yeah. Those people are heroes trying to haggle with people in the shop yeah and i've yeah, got just, four pound 20 yeah, what can yeah, i yeah. get all that not and much they've got to act as like bouncers at the same time as well yeah you know, like yeah those people have a uh, mad respect for me like fair play to all the boss men yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i love that as well is uh when People come out of clubs and they go, oh, we should go to this place. Oh, the guy, he knows me. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he calls everyone boss, man. He says, hello, boss. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, if you're known in your local takeaway, that isn't a good sign. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's a. Uh, um, to be fair, I am I I I, uh, I am a regular in the Levy Bakery, which is very close to where I live. It's a world class kebab joint uh, in Levensham in South Manchester. 
they make everything themselves, all their own sauces and salads and everything. They're so good. That sounds so, great. Like, I, I, I has got to the point where I walk in and they start cooking halloumi. They know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, that is my one joint. I used to be regulars in pubs. Nowadays, it's just for the halloumi. Yeah. There was a Chinese in South End that I used to go to all the time, and he knew me by name. And uh, yeah, I'd get one of two things, and he'd go, <laughs> and I'd go in, and he'd say, "Oh, pork chow mein." Just like, oh no, not not today. And he goes, "Okay, <laughs> put the order for it." And just like, do the other one. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. What is the best thing you've ever seen someone get unexpectedly excited about? That's, I remember oh. now why I'd stopped asking that question because I find unexpected, unexpectedly excited difficult to say. Um, yeah, that is a tongue twister. Yeah. Uh, so my example think? is I was um, yeah. I was in uh, Cornwall last year uh, with uh-huh. some friends and uh, say friends, it's my ex-wife. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and the opposite of a friend. Yeah. And no, I was I was I was with a friend as well. Um, sure, sure, sure. But we uh, we saw some like chads walking down towards us, or you know, like the Cornwall equivalent, some reprobates, mm-hmm. and they looked like they were going to start some trouble. And I was like, "Oh no, what's going to happen here?" And uh, and they saw a car with its windscreen wipers that had been put up, you know, like classic prank. Yeah, you just do it to anyone, yeah, and yeah. they lost their shit. They loved it so much. They're going, oh my God, have you seen this car? Have you seen this? The windscreen, they're, the, they're up. The windscreen wipes are up. And I was like, that is amazing. So I thought they were going to start a fight and they're just losing, <laughs> losing yeah. their minds over the most simple that's, thing. That, that's quite beautiful. I mean, like, the only example I can th- think of recently was me. I was in Australia living with uh, Roscoe McClellan for the time while I was out there, a Scottish comedian, dead good guy, really funny dude. And he, he described uh, one, one moment I had as the most stoned he'd ever seen anyone be. I ordered a takeaway and it had a cake with it. And uh, I ordered a chocolate cake for me pudding. And then when I opened the bag, I realised that the cake was a cheesecake. And my delight was so disproportionate <laughs> to just discovering something was a cheesecake. I literally went... Oh, it's a cheesecake! And I like, looked around for his like acknowledgement of how amazing that was. And he was just like... Yeah, <laughs> it's like I, I, I think I consider that quite the upgrade. To be honest with you, I was so delighted. I ate a whole cheesecake that evening to myself. Yeah, it's just beautiful. Surprise cheesecake, nothing better. Yeah, that is that is a delight. I love a cheesecake. Ah, yeah. oh, me too, mate. Can't go wrong. What's your favourite cheesecake? Ah, oh, like I'm, I'm, I'm not picky with a cheesecake. You know, I'll. Uh, there's very, there's very few kinds I won't enjoy. Like, I think a chocolate one's probably my favourite, but like I'll take a fruity one, you know, whatever's going. Yeah. 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 I like a nice vanilla cheesecake. Oh, you know what? Give me a slice. Let's go. It's classic, isn't it? Yeah. My friend and I, uh, we once uh, had a just had a night where he had bought a, a bottle of Morgan Spice rum. Uh, and we just we accidentally drank the whole thing, and then sure. uh, ate an entire cheesecake between us, and we felt unwell. And it was we talk about it still. It was great. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's an incredibly sugary drink as well to have with a cheesecake. Oh, it's so it's sugary. sweet on top of yeah. sweet, and yeah, 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 yeah. It does sound like a pretty good night though. To be fair. Yeah. Yeah, that was delightful. I mean, I don't really drink much, to be honest. Uh, yeah. But that was, I think, that was towards the end of the end of my drinking lots days. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Good, good night. Um, right, I'm going to ask one more really quickly. Sure. Uh, what's the best lie you've ever been told? Ah, oh, the best lie I've ever been told. Uh, I don't know if I told me, but I did once convince my old boss in the pub that uh, J two O was the chemical formula for juice. <laughs> I really enjoyed that one. Uh, like, I really, I really love telling people like lies and stuff, and then just never correcting them. I like just sending these jokes out into the world. When we we're in Malta, I convinced my missus that um, that jazz was invented in Malta by a guy called Henri Yaz, <laughs> and uh, I was like, "Yeah, we should go see Henri Yaz's house." And I've still never corrected her on that. But yeah, like, I love those little sorts of lies. One of my uncles told me that uh, left hand, like left-handed people's hearts were on the other side of their body, and I believed that for about fifteen years. Yeah, I heard that. So like, 
Yeah, obviously not true. Obviously. No. Yeah, no, obviously not. But like, I love those little ones, just like sending those little lies out into the world. And like, I always enjoy one when when one's being done to me. Yeah, that's great. I I get those sometimes. Where years later, like recently, I'll have I'll have thought to myself, oh, that wasn't true, was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone yeah, telling yeah, me yeah, the, the most that. obvious things. Yep. 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 They yeah, well, me. there used to be a lot more of that back in the day when you couldn't, like, Google things to find stuff out. Like, you might have just tell you something confidently and you had to believe it. But, you know, that's sort of coming back with chat GPT, isn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah. That's basically just a, a mate who bullshits to you and people just believe it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I might start doing that. Tell me a lie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's getting to do some creative lying for you. Yeah. Oh, that's a great yeah. idea. I mean, look, it's going to destroy all the humanity. Why not have a laugh with it first? Yeah. I um, I told my family on April Fool's Day that uh, I was getting back together with my ex. <laughs> That's too brutal. <laughs> That's so much too brutal. <laughs> oh God, how did it go? Oh, it, it went. It landed well. <laughs> Surprisingly, yeah, well. Yeah, well, yeah. my mum called me a twat <laughs> for a minute, but yeah. <laughs> One of my mates uh, really fucked up with one. He uh, At Christmas, he thought it'd be very funny to uh, give his girlfriend a ring box that when she opened oh, it, no. had a message that just said, ha, psych. <laughs> and That's he thought he choice. was being so funny, and she did not agree. <laughs> no. Fucking hell. Yeah. Did they break up? You've really got... They, they're on the ropes. <laughs> <laughs> By the time this is out, they might have done. Yeah. Well, it's tomorrow. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Just That was one of the dumbest pranks I've ever seen. He was like, yeah, she's annoyed at me. He told me that and I went, yes, I'm not surprised she's annoyed at you. That's Idiot. so stupid. I've heard... It really is. A lot of, like, there's, there's a lot of sort of mad, stupid pranks where, like, you think, oh, mm. that person could get hurt, that person could get injured, like that is worse. <laughs> it is. Like, any prank where you sort of raise someone's hopes then dash them, I think is not fun. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I think it's too cruel. Like, pranks, uh, they're a delicate balance. You know, you've got to find it so it's fun for everyone, isn't it? Yeah. Because, like, if you have a think for two seconds, she's not going to find that funny at all. No. Obviously not. Yeah, and like the guy is incredibly unromantic anyway. So you know, like it was the first time he'd seen he'd done something romantic, and he just skewered it so hard. Uh, so any potential pranksters out there, don't do that one. No, would be my advice. That is, and if you do, film it so that we can at least enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. At least someone else can get the joy out of it. Yeah, because sh- surely you're not going to enjoy it and your partner definitely is not going to enjoy it. <laughs> no, no, I can confirm they did not. Amazing. Uh, oh, that's, I like that. Wonderful. What what an idiot. Um, cool. <laughs> so we've uh, we've plugged your show. Uh, where, yes, where can Born people Ready find coming you? out soon on YouTube. Yes. So it's going to be on the Dead Men Talking YouTube channel. Um, but like to be honest, it'll show up in your algorithm hopefully in a few weeks, uh, especially if you're like following this. But just check out, uh, you know, I'm going to be, if you follow me on social media or anything, you're not going to miss it. I am going to be promoting the shit out of it because I've worked really hard on it and I would like everyone to watch it. So uh, yeah, and like I'm not asking for any money or anything, just watch the thing. Like if you watch it, that helps spread it to other people on YouTube. It's how YouTube works. The more people that watch it, the more people see it. So yeah, yeah I'd love it if some of your listeners could check it out because uh, yeah, I think it's very funny and uh, that's what I'm aiming for. Yeah, that's the that's the dream, isn't it? Putting this out a comedy it, show. What, what do you want it to be? Fingers Funny. crossed. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Uh, and where can people find you on social media? Uh, it's at Rob Mulholland on just about everything. And then uh, Dead Men Talk Pod on uh, most stuff. If you just search for Dead Men Talking. If you like uh, dark jokes, if you've got a bit of a messed up sense of humour, Dead Men Talking is the podcast for you. It's not for everyone, I'd say that. <laughs> you know, if you if you heard that and went, oh, it might not be for me, it's definitely not for you. But for the people who have got a messed up sense of humour and are crucially not Nazis, then come and have a laugh. <laughs> there we go. Not Nazis. Yeah. That's who we want. 
this is it. Like, you know, when you do dark comedy, you've got to be careful to shake them off because they think, oh, you're doing a dark joke. Are you one of us? And <laughs> yeah. no, we're not. We're just having a laugh. Go away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. We're about to run out of time. So uh, I'll, I will say thanks so much for coming on, man. It's, uh, it's been really, really fun. Thank you for having me, mate. Re- yeah, I really enjoyed it, man. Thanks for having no us. No worries. Thanks, man. See you later. Cheers. We'll catch you soon. Yes, indeed. See you, mate. See you, man. Bye. So that was Rob Mulholland. As he pointed out, you can find him everywhere online at Rob Mulholland. Don't forget to get in touch. Let me know what you think. Send me some artwork for merch. I'm happy to, you know, pay pay you back for it. Obviously, I'm happy to pay for your services. Unless you want to donate for free. I'm, I've, I've got some behaviour to feed. Uh, no, I'm, I'm happy to pay for your services. Just, uh, just get, get in touch. Let me know. Let me know if you want to do it. That'd be wonderful. Yeah, so look out for the Patreon that's coming soon. Go and watch Rob's shows. Come and see me on tour. That's the dream. Uh, you know, like I say, I'm definitely... I'm, I'm, at, I'm at Brighton tonight, if you do manage to listen to this in time. I'm also in Brighton on the 28th, which is uh, not this Sunday, but next Sunday. If you you know if you, if you listen to this this week, if you don't, still on the 28th of May. And then a bit of a gap for now. I'm booking dates. I'm, I'm booking dates in. I'm, I am actually doing it. I'm getting around to it. I'm booking dates in for tour dates. Not many because I, it's ambitious as it is because p- p- people don't know who I am. But you know, I'm trying. So yeah, come and say, yeah, listen. You're you're my people. Come and listen. Come and I'm good. I'm good at stand up. Like, I'm just not enough people to see me do it yet. But come and come and see it on tour. Definitely got Bristol. It's the the room above on July the fifth, and uh, I'm at Cellar Arts Club in Worthing on I think it's the thirteenth of July. Yeah, I'm um, um, getting some in in Cambridge and others in Essex, sort of nearby, because it's, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's worth exploiting. There'll be some in London. If you want me to do a show near you, get in touch. Let me know and I'll do it. Social media, through the podcast, tpodgmail.com, whatever you want to do, just get in touch and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, come and, I'll come and gig near you. Right. I've got to get ready for the day. I've got to get to Brighton. Thanks so much for listening. I love you all. Goodbye.